Aloha. Welcome. I'm Dr. Pat Borman. I'm a physician with Hawaii Pacific Neuroscience, and I'd like to talk with you today about the six pillars of brain health. I've been with Hawaii Pacific Neuroscience for almost six years now, and um, the work I do is predominantly with patients and families living with dementia. Um, I'd like to start off with a topic that is in the news today. And we know that right now we're having a global pandemic with the coronavirus. But I want to alert you that there are actually two global pandemics going on simultaneously in our world. There is the coronavirus pandemic, which is stealing a lot of news time. And there is also a pandemic of dementia. So let's compare these two global pandemics. Current estimates are that there have been 42.7 million cases of coronavirus since it's made its appearance this year. And the number of cases currently in the world of dementia is 50 million. The deaths caused by coronavirus have, of course, been horrendous. There have been 1.15 million deaths this year. But I want to um, emphasize that dementia causes 2 million deaths every single year. And so um, that's an information that many people don't know. Um, I think very important in comparing these two pandemics is that 97% of people who develop infection with the coronavirus recover. And the sad fact is that there are zero people that recover from dementia. There is no cure. We don't have a way to reverse it. And sadly, it's universally fatal. So economics are another big thing. And I think it's too early to know exactly the economics of the coronavirus pandemic. It's certainly estimated to be in the trillions. Currently in our global economy, $818 billion is spent each year in the care of those living with dementia. If this wasn't scary enough, I want you to know that dementia has increased by 117% in the last 15 years. And the estimates are, if we're not able to do something to intervene, that there will be 82 million cases by 2030 and 152 million cases by 2050. So you can see that this is an incredibly important topic. So with any pandemic, um, prevention is very important. Prevention matters. And of course, there's the adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So <clears throat> we've been hearing a lot during the coronavirus pandemic, wash your hands, wear your mask, be sure you're practicing social distancing. Well, today I'd like to talk to you about preventive matters to impact the dementia pandemic. And these are the six pillars of brain health, which we'll get into now. There is new information available that 50% of dementia cases can be prevented or delayed. That's phenomenal news. And most important in this um, process of prevention are the six pillars of brain health. These include nutrition, physical activity, medical health, rejuvenation, mental fitness, community and social interaction. So let's take a little bit of time which e with each of those. So nutrition is so important. We really are what we eat. And um, very exciting in the world of dementia prevention is something called the MIND diet. Um, and there's research that shows a combination of the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet can reduce the incidence of Alzheimer's disease by up to seven years. This is the most powerful thing that we know of so far in uh, preventing dementia. 
So how we eat and what we eat is exceptionally important. The MIND diet consists of 10 foods that are strongly encouraged and five things that should be avoided. So most important is that the brain healthy diet is plant-based. So we want to be sure that you're getting plenty of green leafy vegetables, plenty of other fruits and vegetables. This diet highlights nuts, which contain all the right fatty acids for our brain. It highlights berries, which contain antioxidants that support brain health. It emphasizes beans and lentils, whole grains, fish and poultry if you're not going to become completely vegetarian, and for any kind of fats or olive oil is recommended. And many people are happy to hear that wine is on the MIND diet, but only one glass per day, please. There are certain things to avoid for brain healthy diet. Red meats and animal products actually create inflammation in the brain, which is not healthy. And so I think of red meats as the four-legged animals, our beef, pork, and lamb. We want to very much minimize those in our diet. Likewise, butter and margarine are kind of out of favor. Instead, dipping your bread and such in olive oil would be healthier. And cheese is uh, also an animal product made from milk, so that should be minimized in the diet. Um, pastries and sweets, much as we might love them, are not really very brain friendly. And finally, how we prepare our foods is also important because if we use high cooking temperatures, um, such as deep frying, grilled, or broiled, like our barbecue that's so popular here in Hawaii, when we make foods on high temperatures that create that brown, crispy, crunchy, that's what's bad for the brain. So um, cooking on lower temperatures, such as saute or stir fry, would be healthier for us. The other part of nutrition that I like to emphasize is hydration. Now, we all need to drink plenty of water. Um, and water is very important because our brain is 75% water. And um, we should each get about eight to 10 glasses of water per day and certain health conditions can um, influence how much water we need. Um, generally about 64 ounces or two liters a day should be our goal point. The second pillar of brain health is physical activity. Um, and physical activity has so many benefits for us. It increases quality of life, well-being, it can improve our mood and sleep, it actually adds energy, benefits our posture, definitely helps brain function, helps concentration and decision making. It also supports health in general by helping us to lose unwanted weight, helps us manage heart disease, cancers, injuries, stress, and depression. So you can see there's just so many positive things about physical activity. I wanna remind everybody, let's get up and go. The main types of physical exercises that are um, encouraged are aerobic exercise, strength training, balance, and flexibility. The next thing I want to emphasize is the third pillar for health, medical awareness. If you have chronic medical conditions, it's very important to take care of them and do the best that you can to control them. This is particularly true for vascular risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol levels. Obesity is another thing that's really harmful for um, brain health and our health in general. So if you are overweight, it's never too late to start to bring that um, bad habit down. And finally, um, I like to emphasize that depression which is common in our society and unfortunately is increasing during the pandemic with coronavirus, depression is very injurious to our health, to our brain, and to our quality of life. So it's important to take all of these things seriously and get some help. 
The other medical awareness that um, I like to stress is just don't smoke. There's nothing good that we can say about smoking. And um, it's interesting that right now, globally, it is our youngest population that is still taking up the habit and um, going forward with cigarette smoking. The next brain pillar <coughs> is rejuvenation. And this includes sleep. Sleep is critical for the brain. And every type of animal on our planet needs sleep. And sleep is a little bit mysterious because we don't know all of the things that we do, but we know that it is restorative, that it enhances learning and memory. Sleeping improves our immune system, our mood, and it is a time that the body can detoxify the brain. There are many things that impact sleep, and if you feel that you're not sleeping well, that's another area of improvement that will serve you for better brain health. The other part of rejuvenation is relaxation. And it's very important that we manage stress, that we stay positive. It's important that we take time to play, to be happy, to have fun. And um, I love the mantra, make gratitude your attitude. It's very important for our health and for our brains that we take time off for good behavior. The next pillar of brain health is mental fitness. This has to do with building our brains to have lots of resilience and lots of reserves. The mantra for mental fitness is use it or lose it. We want to be involved in activities that promote adaption and so we can respond to changes we want to be positive, to stay engaged. It's important to have a life of meaning and fitness. We hope that you can be seeking out accomplishments and build relationships. All of these things have benefits in building stronger brains. The last health pillar that I would like to review has to do with social and community interaction. And we truly are social animals. And connection and community, family and friends, these are all very per important for our health and for our brains. Um, community and social act interaction have been severely impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so I'm anxious that we can get through this to a point we're able to return to activities that we love to in turn support and foster everybody's brain health. So in closing up, um, I'd like to review the, the pillars. Number one, nutrition. You are what you eat, so eat smart. Number two, physical activity. Get up and go. Number three, medical awareness. Take good care of you. Number four, rejuvenation. Get good sleep, relax, and make gratitude your attitude. Number five, mental fitness. Use it or lose it. And number six, social interaction. We are social animals. I want to thank you today for listening. I hope you have learned some about um, our severe pandemic of dementia. And remember, 50% of cases are preventable. So let's get on it. Thank you so much.